There's been an article spreading like wildfire online over the weekend about how Final Fantasy VII Remake's director was praising the amount of diversity that Naughty Dog put into The Last of Us Part II, and a lot of people were disappointed to see this because The Last of Us Part II is trash and so is the company behind it. If you really enjoyed the game, good for you, I'm glad that you liked it. I personally really didn't. Seeing a franchise I really liked and watching main characters get their heads squashed like an orange in a juicer by Ma'am Abby Smash definitely was not what I wanted out of it and Naughty Dog over the past year has continuously gone on about how inclusive they were with the game and how diverse they tried to make it because of course it featured female lead characters and LGBTQ relationships. So to hear this director was supposedly praising the diversity in the game wasn't really the news that people wanted and what people were expecting to hear, but the game journalists of the internet have done it again because a journal with The Gamer, a website that's more worried about pushing a narrative than giving people good advice or news about games, has been caught twisting this director's statements about diversity in The Last of Us Part 2. So I'm going to read the original article that came out and then an update about how The Gamer misrepresented the quotes from this director. Now, really quickly, before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or Minds, or even join our Discord so you can see when my videos are posted. And if you really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon. All of the links are in the description. And of course, I do really appreciate all of the support. So the original article's title is Final Fantasy VII Remake developer says The Last of Us Part II is a benchmark for video game diversity. So speaking with the gamer, Final Fantasy VII Remake co-director Momotu Toriyama has expanded upon the LGBTQ nature of the JRPG remake, as well as highlighting how Naughty Dog's The Last of Us Part II set a new benchmark for diversity in the gaming medium. While it was a rather harrowing experience, The Last of Us Part II broke a number of boundaries with a lesbian heroine, bisexual romance, and a trans gender character all featuring prominently throughout the unfolding narrative. I personally did not like The Last of Us Part 2. It was a really disappointing game in my opinion. If you liked it, good for you, but a lot of people really didn't like it. It was a very divisive game, but this is not the first game to feature a lesbian heroine or a bisexual romance, and of course, this journalist is trying to make it sound like it was like it was revolutionary. Yes, The Last of Us Part 2 did feature all of these things, but they weren't the first to do it. It says The Last of Us Part II really delivered on its consideration for diversity, the director said. Right down to the UI, and I would imagine that the cost of debugging on the game was massive. However, having achieved that makes it a great game that sets a benchmark for the industry. So, right off the bat, the statement starts with talking about gameplay and features the game has. And then, of course, this journalist goes on to twist the words, ma making it about the LGBTQ nature of this um of this game this director does reference it very briefly but as we will find out he was not just simply talking about the lgbtq nature of the game. It says it's rare to see such a large Japanese studio talk so honestly about the importance of queer representation, with Toriyama-san expanding further on the idea and how the team wanted to not only update the Final Fantasy VII Remake to take advantage of new technology, but to also respect and embrace the world we live in today. I think that expressing diversity with LGBTQ inclusion is an important issue for everyone everyone involved in making content, not just making games. And in Final Fantasy VII Remake, we rebuilt the original game using the latest technology, but we felt that it should not stop at the technical side, and we needed to update the story content being shown in line with modern sensibilities. I'm sick and tired of hearing developers worrying about modern sensibilities and appealing to a global audience. They did change some things in the Final Fantasy VII Remake where they drastic no, but of of course, they did make some changes and some people didn't like them. I played the game. I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was a good remake, but going down... 
Time will tell whether the coming sequels will expand upon these ideas, but it seems that Square Enix is approaching its storytelling with the right attitude, which of course, uh, to this journalist, is to push a narrative and to fit more into modern sensibilities and to change things to be more sensitive. But I want to go over to this Bounding Into Comics article that says the gamer misrepresents quote from the Final Fantasy VII uh, remake director to push diversity and The Last of Us Part Two. This is all journalists do is push their narrative, twist statements, and of course try to talk good about The Last of Us Part Two. They are obsessed with this game. So it says, according to The Gamer, the Final Fantasy VII Remake co-director recently offered praise to Naughty Dog for the diversity in the game, but a deeper look into this assertion reveals that the video game news outlet may have reached this conclusion by misrepresenting the Japanese developer's actual words. They literally said, let me take this quote out of context so I can push my own narrative in this article. The gamer is quickly approaching Kotaku levels of hate-click-filled BS articles because, oh wow, they've been on a streak lately. They even put out an article a couple of days ago talking about how no one really cares about Lucasfilm renaming Boba Fett's ship and how everyone should just get over it and accept it. They are putting out completely garbage articles lately. So it says, on July 5th, the gamer published an article headlined Final Fantasy VII Remake Developer Says, The Last of Us Part II is a benchmark for video game diversity like I had just read, but it says, while he certainly does acknowledge that The Last of Us Part II delivered on its consideration for diversity, it appears that King's framing that he uh, had heralded said diversity as a benchmark for the industry amidst the sentence immediately uh, preceding this author inspiring descriptor in which the co-director explicitly expressed his admiration for Naughty Dog's work developing the game's user interface in the massive amount of money he imagined it cost them to debug the same work. Scrolling down, it says, uh, taking into consideration the full context of his statements, it appears that rather than praising the game's diversity, he was actually offering his respect to the game's impressively extensive list of accessibility options and all the work it took to make them function properly in an exhaustive number of various combinations. Now, I really hated The Last of Us Part Two and just the direction they went in with the story, but accessibility and features are ultimately positive. The more options for players, the better. And yeah, Naughty Dog definitely put a lot of thought into the features for this game, but that doesn't mean it was good by any stretch of the imagination. This right here is just such a disappointing situation to hear about because there still are a few good game journalists out there, but I'd say like 90 to 95% of them are pure garbage and this is a perfect example why. Instead of simply writing an article talking about an interview with Final Fantasy VII's director and how he praised Naughty Dog for putting loads of features into The Last of Us Part Two, they decided to play off of the word diversity and make an article they knew would get more clicks by simply misrepresenting a lot of his words. This is why no one trusts game journalists and why no one cares about them. Because while the few good ones are trying to better the industry, these ones are just pounding out articles for hate clicks. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.